G'day everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video. This is an extension of last week's topic which was Rainbow Facts. This week we're looking at Rainbow Facts to 100 and also the 7 times number facts. The reason I'm putting the two together is that's what's on the worksheets that accompany this video and the worksheets come from a revision book of facts. So they're um, a variety of strategies, we pack them all into one book and so most worksheets have a couple of strategies for the students to revise. So Rainbow Facts to 100 really extends the students' knowledge of the simpler, plain, standard, basic um, rainbow facts up to 10. Um, and it does it in a couple of different ways. So the first one is a pretty easy one, and that's looking at multiples of 10. So just as the students know, for example, that 4 plus 6 equals 10, they should be able to extend that knowledge once they're familiar with um, the multiples of 10 and the number 100, that 4 tens and 6 tens is 10 tens or 100. And so that's a number fact that they should um, pretty easily um, be familiar with. We can use a number line to show the same thing. So we're not drawing the rainbow this time, although you could possibly do that. But just the idea that we've got numbers up to 100 here, if this is all the numbers to 100, if we said let's start with a hop to 30, how much more do we need to get up to 100 or 30 plus what equals 100. That's a, a, the idea of a rainbow fact up to 100. But that's only looking at multiples of 10. Obviously we've got a lot of other numbers between them, so if we have numbers comprised of 10s and 1s, we can extend the same thinking. So let's take another example. Um, supposing we've just done 30, let's make it 32 plus something equals 100. We could use the number line for this. Number lines are quite useful for helping students um, think about facts based on other facts. So if you already know 30 plus 70 equals 100, how can you do 32? So let's jump across to 32. There we go. How much more is there? Well, it's not going to be 70, is it? Because 70 was the answer when we only start, our first hop was to 30. This is a little bit beyond that. So the 2 has to be taken away from 70. And of course, this will be 68. And there's a variety of different ways we could help the students to understand that. My approach, quite honestly, would be to, to put the challenge up to the students and say, well, you know what 30 is, I want you to work it out. Think for yourself, you know, develop your mathematical thinking. And so the idea of compensation, adding a bit more here to take a bit more off the other number, um, is a useful mathematical skill for doing a whole lot of mathematical, um, uh, sorry, mental computation. Let's look quickly at the seven times fact. So we'll move on from the uh, rainbow facts to 100. How can we approach this and what's the strategy? Because as you'd be aware if you've watched my other videos, we adopt a strategies approach. We recommend that for teaching all of the number facts for all four operations and specifically for multiplication. We've got the doubles, we've got the double doubles, we've got place value based strategies for the ten times and five times. What do we do for sevens? Well the answer is there isn't really a neat strategy for them because the sevens are, there are not any straightforward patterns in the sevens. There are tricky ways you can do it, but there aren't any nice straightforward ones. So my approach would be to do something like this. Let's start with listing all the number facts that we need to know, like so. And I'm going to stop at 10, although obviously you could go to 12, depending on where you teach. Students may be only required to go to 10 or they may be asked to go to 12. But let's stop at 10 for the sake of this exercise. And then look at which ones the students already know. We could ask the students which ones do you find easy? You know, tell me ones that you already know, the ones that you just straight off the top of your head you know what they are. Well seven zeros is nice and easy, that's going to be zero. Uh, seven ones are seven, seven twos are fourteen, seven tens are seventy. So there's a few knocked off. Um, we know seven threes because that's a bit more than seven twos. We add another seven. Seven fours we can get from seven twos by doubling again. Seven fives, the five times are all easy. They end in zero or five and there are ways to think about which one the answer is. And seven nines, we've got lots and lots of patterns. We can use our fingers, etc, etc. 
Look at that, we're only left with three. So I would point out to students that these are probably the most difficult three. And really we've done all the others before. In fact, we've done these before as well, because if we've already done the sixes and the eights, which I'd recommend that you do because they're a little bit easier than the sevens, then there's really only seven times seven, which is a square number. So basically if we focus our attention on those three in particular, Again, this is the sort of thing that you could put onto a poster for students, um, just for them to look at and um, to remind them of what they've learned about this particular set of number facts. These are the tricky ones. These are the ones you should spend the most time on. I remember telling students when we had um, number fact competitions regularly each week that if I wanted to trip them up, if I wanted to give them the hardest number fact I could think of up to 10 times 10, that was seven times eight. And so they all went home and learned that particular number fact, which of course um, was a benefit to them. So that's the approach I'd recommend to doing these seven times number facts. We've come to the end of the video and I'll talk to you next time.